corporate organization organizations with the can work as partners in a collaborative manner to drive the growth and adaptability of the organization for example alumni is the entire corporate for this your conference and also the team that we need a team tech of our alumni the 30 team tech member of our alumni in future you will become a team tech of our alumni right so they are very active with us working with us mentoring students and also today we have this hybrid round table conference mr santosh samila 2011 13 can you give me a big hand for such in 11 13 batch he is heading the business of intertech in india the global company and very unique he will tell more about this company uh, you can explain a little bit more about what you do yeah, but you please uh, continue yeah. right so santosh will tell you about what he is doing in india and how this company is different in a different niche altogether right dr prest is one of the panel members Yeah. You know, Doctor Prince. Right? Yeah. He is also launching a center of excellence for customer analytics at ISBR very soon. Okay. Nikhil is also joined. Manisha also has joined. Right. So some think tank members and some more alumni will join online. So I believe so one of the panelists is online. Two panelists are offline. And two panelists, Prerna and Anshita. Oh, hospital. Can you please highlight Mr. Nikhil so that he can also say hello? Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello, Prashant. Hi. Oh, you have an accent of ISBR. Oh, yes. I'm fine. How are you? How are things? Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and esteemed members of the ISBR alumni think tank, a very good afternoon to all. It is with great pleasure. that we welcome you to the round table conference an initiative driven by the arisnia alumni think tank where mind takes the shape of the future i am ashita jalwani your host for this engaging and thought provoking event today we are gathered here to explore innovative ideas exchange valuable insights and create a blueprint for the model sector before we delve into our discussion Let us take a moment to acknowledge the incredible journey that has brought us all together. It is the spirit of the collaboration, the thirst for knowledge, and the commitment that unites us all as alumni of ISBR. Now, I request our dynamic and always supportive managing director, Dr. Manish Kothari, to give presidential address for today's conference. Can you? <laughs> The audience. Yes, sir. Hello, everyone. Hello, sir. Such a nice moment. What a way to start the Saturday. Amazing. You are with your students. When I came to the campus yesterday, I saw some great moments in the institutions, and what was happening in the canteen was, uh, I think, uh, collaboration. Right? All the classmates came together, and what you did. as a great event it was a collaboration and today we are here to discuss collaboration and see that how institutions and organizations and individuals scale up with collaborations yes we are all here for collaborations before i start may i have all the women uh, in this hall please stand up for a minute rather we should stand up and yeah, and, uh, I will, and let's you know let's look at all of them And let's appreciate and celebrate our International Women's Day. With <laughs> with all of us are what we are today. It is because of you and people like you. If ISBR is what it is today, it is because of the founding moments laid down by people like you. If our country. Is what it is today. It is because of people like him and you. So please celebrate yourself not only today, every day and every moment. You always wish you all the best. Take your seat. Thank you. Alumni think tank is a unique concept. I don't know how many of you are even got into the details of what an alumni think tank is. 
by from 2007, every batch, two batch students, uh, one uh, uh, male and female, uh, comes together, and till date, all the batches have come together and they have created what is known as an alumni think tank. Bye bye. And this alumni think tank has created an initiative of this roundtable conference today. So I think to all the alumni think tank members who are present online and who have got into making ISBR what it is, this is what we That's a perfect example of collaboration. When every batch students came together and they, they became a brand known as the ISBR alumni. It's a perfect example of collaboration. And that's one collaboration that happens. Do you know why collaborations happen? Collaborations happen for growth. Collaborations happen to make use and support of each other's talent. Right? Collaborations happen to see that organizations grow. Collaborations happen to see that cost cutting can happen. I'm, I'm happy to see that a discussion happened at this stature and I pray that this think tank grows such discussions into live projects and make things happen at this institution and beyond. Just to tell you, at ISBR Business School, whatever we are today, it is because of collaborations. We have international partners, 30 on board or 30 plus on board. And if we are able to achieve student exchange programs, it is because of collaborations. What ISBR has set up in India and what, say, ESC Clever Ferro has done in France, we come together and utilize the strength of each other, and that's collaboration. Right? We work with PwC, understand what is their requirements, and then their team members and our faculty works together, collaborates to see where we give them the future generations from this institution. Collaboration. ISBR Business School joins hands with IAM Library to see that the research that has been done by their people, by their faculty, is accessed by our faculty and students. Example of? Example of? Collaboration. Collaboration. ISBR Business School, the faculty of this institution wants to write a research paper on sports. They collaborate with the spirit partners. Now all of you know what are spirit partners, right? And they write a paper together. Collaboration. One of your students, I mean the second bench, the first student there, please stand up. You had a buddy system and you created a buddy for yourself just three days ago, right? You had, had some dinner moments together, you had, had some discussions together, and now you are in touch with each other. They working together is appreciate that. Finally coming together with the intention of doing good, with the intention of growth, is collaborations. I'm happy that the first topic that the alumni think tank and the team thought about is collaborations, which is nothing but coming together. To all our alumni members, Santosh Kurela. Santosh Kurela is a case study for ISPR. I don't know how many of you really know that. Santosh Kurela was the first student from this institution who got placed on campus with a company known as TUV. And uh, in the first attempt, he got picked up. And TUV came back after one year saying that if these are the types of students you produce, you want to work with you and take more of them. I think you worked there for how many years, Santosh? For four and a half years. It was not a single week that while working with them, he has not come on the campus. He collaborated with the corporate relations cell of this institution and reviewed that department to the next level. Every evening, I think uh, Kavita is here. Every evening you used to ask me, this student has been hired by ISBR or what is happening? He used to be there in Abbas's office, one of the corporate relations head, and discuss strategies, work together. And that was collaboration. So he is one such case study. Like that, we have Nikhil MS from Salesforce who has joined us, Prerna Singh, founder, and Anshita Sharma, success uh, manager as sprinkler. All of them are part of this panel discussions and the alumni of this institution. Can we have a huge round? <laughs> as we discuss and as we talk, I would just give you some classic case studies of a few collaborations that have happened in the history of our country and the world. And then I leave 
the whole discussion open to the panel, which has been uh, moderated by Dr. Anand Agarwal, and take it forward. So one of the classic case studies of collaborations that happened, and I always look upon is Amazon and NASA. Do you know what happened in this collaboration? What, what worked and what grew very well? So Amazon wanted to start its web services from the cloud, which was never there in this world. So it collaborated with NASA to launch what is known as AWS. And if you really look at it, 60 plus percentage of startups now use these services to take things forward. This is one such example of collaborations that happen. Let's take a classic example of a recent collaboration happened in India, Reliance Geo and Google. Anyone aware of these collaborations? Just raise your hand. So Reliance Geo came together with Google to develop an affordable 5G smartphone. And if you really look at it, all our homes, all the TVs, in fact, the recent IPL that is going to be hosted is on only one channel, OTT. Which one is that? That's the collaboration, right? And that is why they come together. Let's take another Indian example and uh, which, which created a new classic airlines that we all are proud about. Any idea which one is it? An Indian and an international airlines comes together to give you a premium airline. You're loud. You're right. So Tata Suns and Singapore Airlines comes together and they create Air India Express. Oh, not Air India Express. It is Vistara. And if you really ask anyone which is the most premium airlines today, it's a Vistara one. And it is going successful. Again, an example of great collaborations for success and adaptability. I don't know how many of you know that competitors also come together and collaborate. And that is a new phenomenon that is going on. What is it known as? A very interesting one. When you want to collaborate with your competitors, it is known as co, not competition, co-optation. So they come together and see that they work on two interesting things and finally give a good product to its consumers or to, to the people at large. And one such example is Mahindra and Mahindra and Ford combining together, coming together and trying to see that if it could leverage the strengths of one's research and one's manufacturing capability and give a product to this world, so simple. Before I end, I will just give you some examples of why, of how and what ways organizations collaborate. One is strategic partnerships. I'm feeling like I'm taking an MBA class or an MBA session. <laughs> and believe me, I'm very good at it. Get into teaching, right? Okay, strategic partnerships happen. I'm good at creating something. Professor Presh is good at doing something. We come together strategically and and want to give the consumer something good. That's one type of collaborations. Another type of collaboration is joint ventures. Do you know what a joint venture is? Yes. So I have a land, but I don't have the capacity to build on it. So I give a land to a builder and say, you build on it. And my land plus your building together, we share 50, 50, 40, 60, 30, 70, whatever. So it is known as a joint venture. Maximum of the construction companies that follow are joint ventures in place. Third interesting thing is alliances. It's again a type of collaboration where the companies come together, but they do not give up their identities. And then they work together and to give a common output or an output for the world, and that's known as alliances. They still retain their identities together. You have something known as industry consortia, again, where a group of companies within the same company works. So we want to do a convocation day, ISVR business school and ISVR college comes together and does it together. So that's a collaboration. I would be very happy if today's program discusses various types of collaborations and how the students can make the best of it. Before I move ahead, uh, one warning sign on collaborations and listen to this carefully. I'm not very good at it, I'm trying to. 
निभाने का वक्त आया तो मुकरता चला गया तो हियर इज व्हाट हैपेंड किंग शिखर एयरलाइंस एंड डेक्कन एयरलाइंस केम टुगेदर आर यू अवेयर ऑफ इट वेरी मच सो किंग शिखर एयरलाइंस एंड डेक्कन एयरलाइंस केम टुगेदर लॉट्स ऑफ प्रॉमिसेस to the consumers to the people to the world and everyone was looking at two different culture of airlines coming together kingfisher wanted to grow penetrate deeply into the market reduce its cost deccan airlines was bleeding and they thought okay it is a good time to get out of this and see that all my payments are made deccan airlines closed some years later kingfisher airlines closed sometimes this can happen when a collaboration is not with the right team member or with the right culture or with the right intent or with the right things in place if you want to grow collaboration is the key but if you do not collaborate with the right intentions with the right person with the right steady with the right legal things in place you are doomed so collaboration is the key it's only how you do it and how strategically you do it long back another good company came together one of my favorite case studies when i look at collaborations and how it is it really collapsed and it really happened and that one is future group and amazon do you know what happened with future group and amazon do you know the brand of future group that i am talking about which brand in future group i am talking about now you are right right so what happened was future group and amazon comes together and future group wanted to sell all its products on amazon and suddenly future group on the other end also starts working with reliance to start working on collaborations amazon files a suit against against this future group and this case is going on and on and on do you see a big bazaar near you anymore no no do you see a branch factory near you anymore no that's collaboration and that how a wrong collaboration can be. so it has happened with the best of the brands in this world so as i am talking about the goods of collaboration i am also trying to tell each one of you that you have to be careful with collaborations so as a student you would be wondering as a student can i collaborate and if you see that you are doing that day in day out recently you did your rural immersion program and you went with one of an organization that is run by chetna to one of another organization telling that we want to work with you so it's a tripartite collaboration where you see that your final objective of finally serving the society happens so as a student you also collaborate we have what is known as the students groups in these institutions where in different specialization students comes together and works on certain projects or certain initiatives and make it big that is collaborations sometimes you are given group assignments and four different people come some of the ideas match some of the ideas do not match But finally, you all collaborate to make things happen. That's collaboration. So you, as students, are also doing it. I think it's time for you during your time in ISBR to have some collaborations that make some business sense, some social sense, and also test your skills on collaborations before you move out to this world and test collaborations of higher stature. Some of the students are also collaborating with faculty to publish your papers. anyone done here yes yes so you are working closely with your faculty to see that you write a paper and publish it together that's also collaborations so with these few words i am proud of what the alumni is doing i'm proud of this concept known as the alumni think tank it has never happened anywhere in this world and you all have laid the foundation stones i would also like to remember one of an alumni who who really worked hard to make this happen what's her name manisha jain manisha jain and she is there at the meeting as well she's there in the meeting let's give her a great applause you will see yeah. how this collaboration <laughs> becomes one of the collaborations that we are going to be proud of i'm looking forward to this collaboration and see how this collaboration makes ways for each one of us and makes our country and isbr proud all the best dear students look forward to a great interaction with all of you thank you so much sir for your profound words um, i would like to extend a warm welcome to our esteemed panelists whose expertise and experience will guide our conversation today their invaluable contributions will undoubtedly ignite our imagination and inspire us to reach new heights 
Now, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our panelists. Our first panelist is Mr. Santosh. Can you have a huge round of applause? <laughs> Mr. Santosh, from the 2011 batch, is a result-driven professional with over a decade of expertise in business strategy, marketing, sales, key account management, project management, and regulatory compliance in the assessment and certification industry. Proven in identifying and capitalizing on new business opportunities, he adaptively manages sales and operations. Our second panelist is Mr. Nikhil. Can we have a huge round of applause for <laughs> Mr. Nickel from the 2012 batch has over nine years of experience in corporate audit and financial analysis. He currently serves as a product manager at Salesforce.com, contributing to their data, planning, and analytics. Passionate about numbers and community impact, <laughs> he takes pride in being of organizations which are committed to giving back and sustainable development. Our third panelist is Dr. Prish. Can you have a huge round of applause for him? <laughs> Dr. Prish, who heads Center of Excellence of Customer Analytics in IOC. Our four panelists, Ms. Prina and Ms. Anshita, could not grace us with their pre uh, physical presence as they're not keeping well. So, the topic for our discussion for this event, as, as Dr. Manish addressed, collaborative strategies for driving growth and adaptability. In the ever evolving landscape of business and innovation, it is imperative to embrace collaborative strategies that foster growth and adaptability. In today's interconnected world, Organizations are realizing the power of partnerships, cross-functional collaboration, and collective intelligence as catalysts for success. This panel discussion brings together our ISBR alumni think tank members who are industry experts and also thought leaders. From navigating uncertainties to capitalizing on emerging opportunities, <coughs> our panelists will share insights and experiences shedding light on the transformative potential of collaboration in driving sustained growth and adaptability in an ever-changing business environment. Our moderator for the discussion is our dynamic executive director, Dr. Anand. Can we have a huge round of applause? We now request Dr. Anand to take the discussion for us. Let's give a big hand for Dr. Manish. Switch. <laughs> So Dr. Manish has set the platform for this event today. From his speech about different ways of collaboration, from some real world examples of collaboration of success and failure both. I think all of us are very much aware about what are collaborations and we know about some successful and some failed collaborations also now. So it means collaborations are important for us. It can be at either side, it can be very beneficial for us or it can be harmful for us also, right? In this event today, we are going to talk about collaboration basically for growth and adaptability and most of the collaborations are happening because of the need of the growth. Companies want to grow, organizations want to grow, people want to grow, teams want to grow, that is why they want to collaborate. Now, growth is something which is, if you talk to any business person or any expert, they will say growth is imperative, it has to be there. And now in this era for growth, partnerships and collaborations have to be there. A very good example of collaboration is the collaboration with the alumni think tank and ISBR. Today we have Santosh here, we have Nikhil, both of them as alumni busy in their life, heading the business, driving the growth of their companies are still collaborating with ISBR. So this kind of collaboration is happening because there is a win-win. Think tank members also are going to get a lot of benefits from this venture and also ISB is going to get the benefits for the students also. So, at this mindset, when we say, okay, we all know collaboration is important for growth. The first question that comes into mind are the challenges. As Dr. Manish also mentioned, collaboration is challenging because it can lead to failure also. So, my first question is for Mr. Satosh, who is physically with us here that there are challenges which are there, which you face yeah, in driving the growth and reputability of organization as a business head especially. You have a lot of responsibility for the business. 
what are the challenges you face in driving growth and adaptability am i audible or should i use a mic audible much audible so challenges are there especially every business organization strives for growth strives for sustainability strives for existence strives for innovation to do this we need to understand various ways of collaborating within the organization and outside the organization like we as an organization we believe in collaborating with our competitors so we we have we always use collaborate collaborate and compete we always need to understand the dynamic expectations of our stakeholders we always need to assess our business environment so what are our customers expectations are changing what are their business models what are their strategies in terms and we assimilate we have to translate that into our <coughs> own strategies and what are their needs and expectations of our people inside the organization day by day it's quite dynamic in nature when i expect one of my team member to deliver x amount of revenue end of the day it's business right so next month i want this month of this much of revenue to be delivered from this unit which i am handling so what are their expectations what are the challenges that they are facing to understand that first itself is a challenge for me sir and what are the resources that i need to allocate for them and what are what are the strategies that they need to apply strategy is always a big jargon which people always misuse but and what are the basics that we need to what i personally feel is always as an individual as well as as an organization we always fail to set our basics right what are the basics we are talking about collaboration what are the basics of a collaboration to respect each other to understand each other better to be available for each other to be part of each other's journey to correct each other so are we setting our basics right what is the intent of collaboration are we right with that are we right with right intent are we thinking with right mindset are we, are we true to ourselves are we true to our basic principles these are all the challenges that we face because it looks very fascinating to say that <coughs> let's collaborate and do a project <laughs> it theoretically it is always great to speak but are we understanding the nitty gritty of it at the beginning and are we open are we transparent so one one challenge is a transparency second challenge is an integrity integrity has different dimensions and definitions to it are we ethical to ourselves are we ethical to our team are we ethical to our organization are we ethical to our partner because these are all cultural things so how do we inculcate that's a big challenge i am handling a team of 10 people let us say each one comes with different personality and different traits and different culture one sitting in europe one sitting in singapore one sitting in uh, abu dhabi one sitting in china now how do i collaborate with all these forget about me collaborating with outside my organization <coughs> i have to give my time as per their time zones am i ready for that <laughs> now somebody will come and say what about work life balance if i have to get on to a call with somebody at 2 am because he is comfortable at that time i should get up dress up at least i should be pre- prepared to take that call join should have a stable internet should have a peace of mind should have a peaceful room so am i ready am i prepared to have all those made available for myself do i have that respect for my team so the basic challenges what i feel or more of a behavioral cultural integral intent is what i feel thank you thank you santosh so santosh talked about 
various aspects of challenges but ultimately if you really think about the the, the points which are made by satosh are basics which are very human in nature respecting each other integrity transparency understanding each other so in business also it's not different from what you are as a human being we cannot forget in a business that people and we cannot grant people and take people as machines these are humans working together right so that is what that has come out behavioral right and wonderfully he talked about the teams which are in different parts of the world and how he is ready and adaptable to work with the team which are working globally and collaborating with the competition expectation of stakeholders also yeah. came back so very comprehensive discussion one very important component nowadays in business is technology and innovation so my next question is related to that from nikhil because nikhil is from a techno logic oriented company salesforce as a product manager and as a product manager he must be in touch with the innovation and technology day in day out so this question is for nikhil nikhil can you hear me yes sir i can hear you can you all hear me yes so let me stand up so that i can see you so nikhil my question is how innovation and technology can be used can be leverage to drive growth and adaptability and you can tell us the use of innovation and technology from your point of view of working with salesforce absolutely yeah so um, i can tell you something and this with an example actually how many of have you heard about this product called tableau have you heard about tableau i can't really see the you know screen so i hope some no, some no, of you have heard about it look at you can you can you be a little bit louder please uh, i can can you hear, hear me sir Any better now? Nickel on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Nikhil. Ah, uh, is it any better now? Double. Yes, click. yes. Double click is for us. Amazing. So, I was talking about some of the products that we have, uh, you know, and I just wanted to know how many of have you heard about this product called Tableau? Is it have have you heard about it? About Tableau. Tableau. Yes. Yeah, Tableau is very and, popular. I mean, people have heard about it a lot. Yes. Right. And how about Slack? Have you heard about Slack? About cloud? Slack. Slack as a product. Slack. No, I have. I've heard this name for the first time. Yeah. So these are really important collaborative applications. Actually, Tableau is a visualization platform, and Slack is a collaborative application. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this one, uh, two exam, two reasons actually. One is, you know, say, suppose as a business, identifying a collaborative strategy and acquiring these companies. And second one is how these strategies made its life so much better. Now, in the first case, what was happening is that Salesforce is a CRM company which is dealing with millions of data points every seconds. Actually, you know, a lot of people are using it. It's a customer relationship uh, management application, so it basically has a lot of different products and it deals with tons of data. So everyone who is using uh, Salesforce would have this big challenge as to how am I going to see this data? How am I going to summarize it? It's a big question, right? So then Salesforce has this idea. You know what? I think we should have some way of presenting this in a very nicer way to the users, and that's when they they thought of acquiring Tableau. Although Salesforce has had an internal product which is called CRM Analytics, we went ahead and acquired Tableau. That added in that was a collaboration, right? Identified a new strategy and identified a Had a gap, and they went out and acquired something which could add value to the customers and also to the business. And the second product is Slack. So Salesforce is a you know has a lot of customers. It has got a lot of people using it, but at the same time, there's a bigger gap in terms of collaborating with people. And how is it so obvious is that you work with a lot of people in and out, day and you know day in and day out. You might be using email. Think about the situation where you're using email. You write an email, you know, you wait for one day, you get a response, and then you write back to them, and they, you know, respond back to you, and it also takes one day for you. So, which means that a five-minute task is now taking two days of your time. It's really productive, but it's not really right. So that's when you know Salesforce went ahead and acquired Slack, and that was made as our headquarters, virtual headquarters. That was a strategy that Salesforce initiated. What that did was that it solved the crazy, doesn't it? Like considering one application as its digital headquarters and telling you that you know what we're going to be using Slack instead of email going forward. That's like 
sounds crazy, but it, that's what happened. So what we did is like we started using Slack for every internal collaboration. Everything that we started, you know, for everything that we start, you know, we wanted to work on, we started using Slack. And the best part of that was it could actually do much more than email. It, it became a productivity tool as well. We integrated that with multiple other applications, which means that you have just one platform. You go to one application, you do all your work over there, that's it. You don't have to go to, you know, uh, switch over from emails to some other applications or to a different platform. None of that is happening now. Just Slack. You do everything in Slack. So this particular example, if you think about it, is an amazing collaborative strategy. As an organization, what does it add you, you know, add to Salesforce? It is one of the most selling products of Salesforce right now. And at the same time, it is adding so much of value to the customers. Every time when there is a sales happening out in the business, there are a lot of collaboration. There's a lot of communication between the customers and the you know, sellers. And all this communication used to take a lot of time over the call, or you know, there would be a lot of processes happening in between and documentation, all of it. Everything is now in one platform. So that helps business as well, right? Now when it comes to individuals, how does it help? For you, uh, you know, you're an employee of Salesforce. You're going to be working with Salesforce and you're going to be, you know, working on different things. You're going to be working on uh, your daily tasks. You're going to be working on your traffic. There are so many different things that you're going to be working on. How is it going to be helping for you to, you know, grow in your career? That, uh, you know, that's another way of thinking about it. So since this is a platform which can create things like Canvas where you can track everything or workflow, where, you know, you could just create the entire flow of work in one platform, you could leverage that in your own career path as well. In fact, if you wanted to prioritize certain things, you can actually prioritize all of that and track everything. All of that will be done in Slack. So it gives you, in terms of your own productivity as an individual contributor, not just as a company, and also as an individual contributor. So this particular example is one amazing example of how technology could make your life so much better. This is not the end of it. If you think about it, technology makes our you know, life so much better in every aspect. For companies, for individuals, everywhere, right? Think about ChatGPT and OpenAI. OpenAI is a company that produced, that created ChatGPT, right? I'm pretty sure some of you might be using ChatGPT for your assignments and projects, although you're not submitting it as it is, I hope. Uh, you might be using, right? Yeah, so imagine how much creative that is, how much, you know, how important that is for us. We are kind of getting rid of all the tasks that is mundane and that's like repetitive. All of it is getting eliminated. We're using social media for marketing. We're leveraging a lot of different platforms to reach out to the customers and make sure that our product is, you know, reach, uh, reaching a lot of customers across the globe and not, not just in one continent. That concept is gone. We have a lot of products and a lot of them are software products. And we can sell them across the globe, right? So everywhere, every tiny, bit, tiny bit of our lives these days have technology in it. And that has made our life so much easier for, for collaboration. Think about our WhatsApp as well. Think about it. It's our personal you know, chat application and also businesses use it, right? How creative it is. You get a message from a business that, hi, you know what? We have this sale going on right now. You can come and purchase 50% of the job just for you. How wonderful, right? So this is a collaborative way of, I mean, the business is collaborating with you. It's good for you and the business. And at the same time, this technology moves everywhere. Great, great. So Nikhil, a wonderful discussion going on here. You're highlighting about how the different platforms are getting created to focus on productivity and improve the productivity of the people working using those platforms in, in a collaborative manner. I would like to add something. Yes, yes, please go ahead. So, uh, how many of you have studied a subject called business environment? What of your uh, curriculum, right? So, uh, as a business organization, what is a business environment? There are different pillars to it. We call it as PESTEL. So can anybody help me out in understanding what does it mean by? Yeah, please. I don't want to speak. You can, you can speak up. You are saying the right thing. Uh, political, economical, technological, social. social. Yes. So, uh, any business, what does it mean by environment? 
it's a space where we exist as layman in a layman language if anybody wants to define environment that's a space where we exist so any business environment that's a space we exist now we have to collaborate in the space where we exist right these are all the pillars of the space so we have to collaborate we have to adapt we have to strategize how our business should run by satisfying needs of all these pillars what are the needs of political system in a business scenario what are the needs of a technological advancements now you have to definitely train yourself to adapt to all the new technologies that are driving business like how earlier i used to communicate on ibm lotus notes which was an email uh, tool now everyone is using microsoft outlook email communication is must is a basic thing which everybody does now how do you adapt yourself to migrate from lotus notes to microsoft now there the, there used to be skype meetings now ms teams came into picture um nikhil is a classic example he is working with salesforce this is crm crm the concept of crm itself is collaboration and adaptability yeah. that's a strategy crm implementing a crm system in our organization itself is a strategy of collaboration so it's a technology now how do you understand crm how do you understand an erp system as a business organization what are the technological changes happening and what is the future not only now what is the future of a technological advancement or changes or a technological demand rather i would i would reframe you a little bit uh, nikhil so what are the what is the, what are the technological demands which are very much exist which are there forever how are we collaborating with these demands not with the technology with these demands <clears throat> so what santosh is saying is that what is needed is to be proactive because not only what current at this point of time going on in terms of technology but also what is the future demand of technology if organizations are understanding it they will be successful now this is about the future but also history teaches us right dr prest writes lot of cases from the historical developments in the organizations or collaborations and strategies his little cases on zara his little cases on many other organizations who have collaborated who have grown and then they also have adapted to the new environments we're talking about environments so to ask from dr prest um, what are your observations or some insights you have achieved by observing and studying the growth of the organizations using collaborative strategies thank you dr banan actually my collaboration was more into the domain of academic collaborations so when i'm talking about this case on zara which i had published previous year in a sage journal it was about uh, how a company was trying to do the transformation of technology from the traditional stores into omni channel stores so it was one of the most challenging uh, decision they have taken so there was st- storyline coming through that how they took forward this challenges to actually implement those technological transformation and in the process of discussing that story we tried to adapt a model framework known as tam model which is about maybe used for many many years in the domain of technology technological adoption model so we this person who was a co writer with me was actually in the it domain i'm basically been the marketing domain so our basic collaboration uh, domain was exactly how we can complement each other in terms of creating the blend of marketing creating the blend of how it can contribute to the marketing decisions in any particular company in any industry so this case is all about uh, the collaborative uh, effort of building a blend into the marketing dimensions and it so this case which we have developed so let us first understand why we write cases and why we invite industries to collaborate with us to write cases in fact uh one of the ba- primary thing is to whatever stories you normally create or whatever insights you draw from you know industry experience and even nikhil is also bringing so many insights from his own domain we want to bring it into the classroom to make people understand that how they can possibly apply those model like they can adapt those model with a modified format in their circumstances in their environment 
as you said, the, the industrial environment and how they can only learn from that all. Not only this particular classroom, maybe these cases can be a pedagogical, pedagogical tool for understanding and adapting to those scenarios across the world. So when you put up these cases as a pedagogical instrument in the publication houses, those can be exposed and can be taken as a particular learning tool for other business schools in the world and possibly let them understand Indian context also, maybe if they want to collaborate somebody from India and how they can approach in Indian scenario. Possibly these cases can be a tool to make them understand possibly the cultural overlaps and context also. One of the way to handle this scenario of collaboration is writing cases where industry and academia can come together and possibly bring one uh, insights together. Second thing which I want to add on is because I work in uh, old and new IMs also in the past and I have worked with a couple of other institutions, we have an experience and a model of co-teaching. In a co-teaching, we used to uh, bring industry and academia together. And when we used to bring out concepts and model from our own conceptual framework discussion in the classroom, we also bring it the blend of industrial insights to map to those concepts, where we invite industry people to map to those discussions. So I used to teach a course like retail management for many years. And one of my co uh, creator who was used to create the values in that particular course was basically from industry and basically from the domain of retailing only. So for those seven years I have seen across batches that there's an immense knowledge was coming out from the industrial insight, which they can able to understand at the end of the day and can map to whatever classroom insights we are normally going to draw. And at the end of the day, what they're going to make out is whatever framework they'll discuss in the classroom, exactly how you can map those in the industry context is one of the major learning takeaway from their studies. So this is also one of the biggest takeaway from collaboration. I think it's a very good example. Our students can relate it to very easily because at ISBR also co-teaching is happening. In all the courses, faculty members, they are teaching 70% and 30% minimum courses are being taught by the industry people. So this is a very good example of collaboration for the benefit of the students. Now, there can be different collaborations. I'll give one more example. Sir. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry to stop you. Yeah. Uh, as Dr. Manish said, I used to be the regular visitor to this uh, campus and uh, when this formal alumni association concept came into picture when ISBR was going for NBA accreditation uh, somewhere in 2018, uh, we, we formed uh, alumni association. We came up with different ideas out of which one was a mentorship program where uh, each alumni member, couple of selected alumni members will pick around 20 people, 20 students who are already placed as interns in different organizations and they will mentor those students on Saturdays with an objective to understand their internship better and try to convert that internship into an opportunity to get grab a placement. And uh, there were around six students out of my 20 mentees who were very regular. I used to come every Saturday to this campus and sit uh, downstairs <laughs> with them to understand what's happening with their internship, what kind of work is given, and what kind of uh, cultural challenges they are facing, what kind of expectations their organization. Because sometimes what happens is we just go out of the college. We are not able to translate properly. We, we are not able to understand what is an expectation of an organization. Like I'll give you a very classic example. When uh, Professor Kiran Bindu teaches, many people, many students complain that I am not able to catch. <laughs> am I right, sir? <laughs> so to, to, to catch his lecture, what I need to do? Before coming into lecture, I need to practice my Excel properly. Uh, sorry, but I'm taking it as a ex live example here so that many of the students can understand. Like that many of the managers speak something. In a single statement, they say, you can do better. What does it mean by you can do better? <clears throat> if a student wants to understand, what have you done first? What can be better more than this? There are certain people, like there, there was a lady uh, mentee who was even facing a kind of post challenge. Her manager was trying to trouble her. How to handle that situation? So she used to call me every time sir i am facing this kind of situation how do how do i handle this 
So we even guided her to handle that kind of situation. And those six students who are regular out of 20 got placed in the companies where they were working for the outcome of that internship. It was a core learning. Nothing great that I have done. To mentor them, to mentor them, I have to come prepared. I have to talk to some other industry experts whom I am working with. Because someone is working in a retail industry. Now I have to connect with somebody who is already working in future group and understand, hey, one of my mentee is working in one of your similar companies and she's undergoing such kind of challenges. What is your stake on it? What, what are your inputs on it? How can I talk to her? Sometimes even I used to take a con call with somebody whom I know who are not connected to ISB. This is a level to which we have collaborated that. That was a strategy that so, as an association we wanted to implement. So what Santosh mentioning here is that collaboration is not easy. Both the parties have to work together and to see the success. For example, it's a very straightforward success measure here. Six students who are collaborating got success in the placements, but there must be some other measures of success. So my next question is from Nikhil. Nikhil, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nikhil, I can hear you. Question is, uh, how do you measure the success of collaborative strategies in driving growth and adaptability? How can you measure the success? Right. So, I mean, in there are two perspectives of looking at it. One is from a corporate standpoint where you, you know, compare or we, we can use some sort of uh, metrics actually. We call that as KPIs, key performance indicators. That is a way of, you know, measuring any success for any businesses. It could be like financial measures or it could be like your market valuation or anything of that sort. But I believe that in here today, what we're talking about is more relevant for the students. How do they measure their success when it comes to collaboration, right? Actually, you know, your success should be measured based on what you set as your own target. How is your, you know, day to day? And for me, growth and success is actually, especially for the students, is that, you know, you have a long term goal. And are you on the right, right track to be there? And how can you be there? And are you adaptable? What is adaptability? It means that you are, to me, it means that, you know, you have, uh, how well can you cope with the changes in the environment? Santosh just mentioned about pistol analysis, right? You also deal with a lot of uh, you know situations around you. So how well can you collaborate with, or how well uh, can you cope with that changes that's happening around you? There is a new technology that's coming up and there's a lot of hiring for that. You see that there's a lot of data scientist jobs coming up and you are not really into it, or you, know, you want to learn that. And that, that's what helps you, you know, land a job. Similarly, a lot of different you know, things will be going on around you and you want to keep yourself updated. So you have a long-term strategy as a, you know, end goal or maybe like somewhat five, five years goal or six year goal. So for you to measure success is that, are you on the right track? Are you on the right path towards that? Are you better from yesterday? How much have you improved on your, you know, skill sets from yesterday? Those are the things that I would say from an individual perspective, uh, you know, as a growth measurement, for corporate measurement, it is very different, which I think is like, obviously you will learn about uh, key performance indicators and all of it, but I think that is less relevant here. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, Nikhil. So I think these are very common sense when you talk about measures of success as managers, future managers, students who will become managers very soon. We all know to measure success, we need to understand the basics. The basics is what is the target, what is the goal? What is the short-term goal? What is the medium-term goal? What is the long-term goal? And what Nikhil is saying that if we have these KPIs and goals in place and we review it regularly, we will know we are on track. And the measurement can be done using these KPIs. The targets and goals, reviews, KPIs are very important. And long-term, short-term, medium -term. In fact, Yeah. In fact, people can create their own KPIs, key performance indicators. My communication is one KPI that I wanted to work on. Uh, there is something called, you know, my collaboration is one KPI and there is a specific skill set that I want to learn. That is another KPI that you want to, you know, work on and you can collaborate and work on that. So all different KPIs, you can also create KPIs uh, individually for yourself, uh, you know, and also for corporates. Yeah, totally agree with you, sir. So what is coming to my mind when I was listening to Nikhil and I was, I was uh, seeing Dilpreet, this collaboration of alumni think tank and ISBR should have KPIs and targets, <laughs> right? 
should have some goals and let us review together that this alumni think tank and ISBR as collaboration, what are we doing? What are our goals and how are we performing in that? Right? So absolutely. Your statement, Doctor. Uh, anything we do, what is the intent of doing it? What is expected out of it? What is the ways and means of doing it? What are the ways of means of measuring it? And what are the ways of means of correcting it? Unless we don't write these things down, may not be a written paper, written on paper, but unless you don't define these things, it's going to be a pain. Any model for that matters. That's the essence, and that's the essence of management. Management is all about this only, right? And 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 even in your day to day life, you set your alarm. That's planning. <laughs> you set your time to leave your home. That's again planning. You set your time to prepare for a meeting. That's again planning. How many of you have heard of something called Deming cycle or BDCA? How many of us are really understanding it and applying in our real life? So, many students are studying operations, you know, BDCA? Not gone through this term till now. So, it's called, do I have the liberty yes, to yes. take a little more time? Yes. So, BDCA is a concept. It's called Deming cycle where people say plan, do, check, and act. So first phase of it is plan. So you have to write down SOVs for yourself or for your organization. And you are lucky enough that your organization has already set SOVs. Now what you need to do, you need to understand your organizational SOVs. And SOVs are always aligned with short-term as well as long-term goals of any business organization. But as an individual, as a student, what are your targets? What are your goals? As Nikhil rightly said, have you set goals for yourself? To achieve that, what is your plan? He said short-term goals, long-term goals. I would take a liberty to convert that statement into short-term planning and long-term planning. I'm talking about the mission, ways to do it. <laughs> and are you implementing it? Are you putting your heart, soul into it? And are you very measuring yourself with respect to what is set for you? And what if something goes wrong? What if you find something is not aligned towards what you are supposed to achieve? What are the corrective actions you are taking? <clears throat> Collaborative strategies come into picture. Can I plan myself well? Yes or no? No. Let us say no. And how many of us are going and sitting in cabins of our professors. What is the average time we spend in a professor's cabin out of our classroom? We are paying lakhs of rupees to this institute. And this institute is paying salaries to our professors and creating an environment to collaborate with our professors to lay down strategies for ourselves, for our careers. <clears throat> How many of us are doing it? It's not the four walls, right? The campus is so big. Every professor has a cabin, has a time to spend. How many of us are spending time? How many of you had pizza outside this campus with your professor? Pizza or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a collaboration, right? Canteen also counts, remember. It's a collaboration, right? Are we really thinking? That's a strategy. Then they will tell their experiences. Are we thinking right? They will add that it's a brainstorm. Brainstorming happens over there. Right. Outside the classroom. Outside the classroom. People say always think out of the box, right? right? I think it's a good point. See, what Santosh is saying is also my learning. And I think we're moving towards the last question of this particular event. It is about major key insights and actionable takeaways. Santosh is already there in that point. He's a very productive person. So already moved to the next point. My personal experience also is that my greatest learning with my professors has been always outside the classroom, personal meetings. So here also we have a system called faculty mentoring the students. Students do, post to, do go to the faculty members individually also in teams and they sit outside the classrooms in the cabin, outside also in canteens and sometimes in the restaurants. They go together, the interact and mentoring session happens outside the classrooms a lot. And then students are also ambassadors working in different, different teams for events like this. So 
It's already happening. I'm sure when you work in the events, you get some lessons from your supervisors there, right? So it's already inbuilt in the system here, but what Santosh wants to say is that, is it enough for you? Have you planned your own PDCA, your own personal PDCAs? With that, uh, I want to ask Dr. Prest, what are the major key insights and actionable takeaways you think are there for you, or that can be there for the audience from this? Event? Yeah, uh, I would thank uh, whatever insights been drawn by Mr. Santosh and Mr. Nikhil, whatever they have shared. Furthermore, thing which I would like to add to this discussion is, I think if we are clear about each other's role and what is expected from each of us, and we can able to complement rather than overlap each other, will be with the best result for what we possibly can do with the collaboration. So when you're going to think about a collaboration, first of all, let us understand what is expected from you as an individual and exactly how is that going to contribute to the overall success of that collaboration. Whether this collaboration could be industrial collaboration or a research or maybe some kind of a project, I think one common thing coming out is you are clear about what is expected from you. Now, KPIs, that Mr. Nikhil has said that KPIs is an outcome measure to understand whether things have gone fine. But if you see that, okay, you know what you are expected to do, that will drive out your KPIs much more effectively. I think that is one important dimension of understanding collaboration. Now, one another aspect is the behavioral dimension. Are we understand each other well or not? Do we understand each other's competencies well or not? Where you are good at? How do I explore and leverage that competence of yours and how I complement that with my competence? So that ultimately what you want to achieve is the final outcome result and what is being expected and what is the aspiration of yours. So that is what I think is a major takeaway for students and the faculties is if you're collaborating for a research or studies, basically you need to understand that you need to first of all explore which faculty is in which specialized area. And if I'm trying to understand, I'm studying certain things in my classroom inside, how can I map those outside the classroom and understanding that how faculty can help me out in creating the application part of that. But student has to come out, collaborate with faculties. I think one of the biggest model we have in this particular program is we actually been asking the students to write research papers also, reflective writing also. So the, there will be a faculty being assigned for a particular research group, mentee group. We are not only been mentoring, mentoring them for their overall performance, also possibly helping them out in creating proper communication, written communication, oral communication, and bringing their thought, thought more structured way. So possibly this is helping them out to uh, express them well, and and I'm, I'm hopeful that this model of ours is very unique, very innovative. As our discussion was about innovation, so we have been bringing those stuff. This is also a very excellent example of collaboration. So collaborations can be done between industries, between industry and academia, between professors and students. I think, of course, students can give it back to the industries, of course. So all in the era of collaboration, I think. Right. So collaboration is everywhere. And it's possible to collaborate in every section, in every field we are. So the same question is for you, Nikhil. What are the major key insights and actionable takeaways from this discussion? I would really, you know, agree with totally, you know, uh, Santosh and uh, Professor totally because it's exactly your, you will find a lot of things that's going on around, you know, and it is more about if you cannot cope up with that, you cannot grow. If you, what is going to be happening? Like, there's a lot of things that's going on around, and if you really want to grow, you'll have to make sure that you adapt to the changes. You, you know, cope with the changes and all of it, and so you. To get there, you definitely need to collaborate. And a lot of things you can't do it yourself. For you to get that strength, you definitely need to collaborate. And there are a lot of ways for you to collaborate. We spoke about some of the tools and technology and all of it. It's up to you how do you want to collaborate. But there are so many ways, different ways of collaborating, and you should collaborate so, you know, so that you get a lot of insights. You can grow, you can adapt to the changes that is uh, you know, uh, happening around you. You can cope with the changes and grow. So totally aligned with uh, Santosh and Professor. Can I add one more thing to this? Yes. To take this discussion forward and keeping a particular possible model for this collaboration, I would invite that if you can possibly come as a live cases for us so that we can understand how students can able to understand how these live cases have been converted into written cases also and make your company and you as a 
core center and focus of this case and possibly bring some insight out of it is excellent model of collaboration. So we would invite both of you in a particular domain where we can work further. Absolutely, Professor. There's one thing which I can tell you is that, I mean, this is my own experience from the past. Can you all hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So there's some experience that, you know, from the past. So in the past, if we were to work on some sort of, uh, you know, slide, uh, say when I was in college during 2012 to 14, so we would work on Microsoft, you know, PowerPoint. One person will make those changes and, you know, we send it over uh, to the other person via email and that person would be working on it and again send it back uh, to the other person via email. So it's like a back and forth email and there's no collaboration. So like, there is collaboration, but it is a very time lagging process. But instead, you have something called Google Sheet. And I'm just giving you one example. Google Slides are there. So you can, all the students, right, you, you have group activities. You can create a Google Slide, just can go there and everybody can, you know, take one slide and input their job. Whatever inputs that they have, they can just work on it. It doesn't stop you from, you know, doing anything. It does not disrupt any of your work. It does not. It makes sure that any change that is under anybody in that whole process or whole slide would be saved. So it's an excellent collaboration strategy. As a student, you could actually leverage in your uh, presentations, upcoming presentations, actually. So, yeah, just an example. Yeah, I think it's a good example. Yeah. And what Dr. Preshi is asking, we are formalizing it. I think the next part of alumni think tank are live cases only. <laughs> I'll give you a live case of mine, sir. So, uh, in fact, I'll give you a live case of mine as well as what key takeaways that we can think of. Mm -hmm. So, I'm more concentrating on as a student what we can do. Forget about what as an organization does. And when we speak about KPIs or setting targets, now every business organization has come out of that their own KPIs. Now, KPIs are quite dynamic. Now, there's another, I work for an organization where we think of BIC, best in class performance. Mm -hmm. So, my target for next month, if, if I'm measuring on a monthly basis, my target for next month is based on what I achieved last month. My target for next year is what I achieved last year. And it's so dynamic. And the moment I my target changes, I have to change all my mathematics. So I have to figure out all my processes, operations. I have to change my operations. I have to choose different delivery teams. I have to choose different priorities, different clients so that I meet. And I work for an organization which was started by Thomas Alva Edison. It is 150 years old organization. And my unit has achieved 36 BICs consecutively. So that's how dynamic and organizations are working now. So set your own KPI is not enough. You have to think beyond that. That's one about setting KPIs. Now coming to what we can do as students. We are having a lot of guest lectures happening here. Every Saturday is a happening day. In fact, people are pe people always disregard Saturdays. But they are the most valuable days in this campus. Because you have someone coming out from somewhere. So how many of you are selling yourself to them? If somebody who compliments, if somebody who is in line with your career perspective, you is somebody who has traveled the journey which you would like to travel, how many of you are connecting with him? How many of you are going through his LinkedIn profile? How many of you are seeking his phone number and say, sir, do you have five minutes time for me? These are my ideas, which will help the industry which you are working. I want to have a brainstorming session with you. You're going to be buzzed with the students now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm not suitable for all the students. Right? I come from different backgrounds. So the one who would like to travel the path which I traveled, I'm more than happy to connect. I'm just trying to ignite some ideas. So most of our think tanks, the members, we have 30 think tank members. Most of them are ready to come to the class virtually or physically to discuss about the industries. What they are saying is that students should know about the different industries in and out of the industry from the practical real world insights. And we're going to organize these sessions very soon also from the alumni. <laughs> so I think it's a very good discussion. We have discussed about not only the basics of collaboration, the success, <laughs> the failures, the examples, the needs, what should be the 
need in terms of technology need systems processes also behavioral needs the human needs right and now we are talking about different cases and uh, use of technology and measurements of collaboration so it's a fantastic very wholesome discussion about collaborations and growth and with that i am opening this particular forum to the questions from the audience first with the students later on from the faculty members also so students first if any student has a question from anyone you can pick a general question or you can target a question to one of the panelists also so please ask some questions if something has struck your mind you want to have some more clarification on that questions from the students santosh is very friendly don't worry about him he has lot of questions from faculty members because you have trust on them trust on santosh also <laughs> he is very friendly any question that comes to your mind about collaborations growth something personally want to ask how can you be successful in the future this is a real model with you right 2011 13 batch now a business head for a global company right you can ask personal question also from him that how did you do it what can i do yes yes give yes. stand up and give a name also so while collaborating there are some uh, risks to keep in mind so so how to mitigate those risks if not possibly eradicate uh a very interesting question and in any business environment now now the business sir thinking in risk based approach so now when you speak about risk you have to there are two things one is risk assessment second one is risk treatment so you have to first identify what are the risks in what sense that is a risk for that is a risk for your concept and what is the probability of occurrence i i i am just explaining one model i am just explaining one model uh, what is the probability of occurrence and what is the severity of that risk on a scale of 1 to 10 on a scale of 1 to 100% and you multiply them you quantify the severity of a risk that's called risk assessment then if you don't avoid this risk what is the impact first of all you see then when it comes to risk treatment try to avoid a risk if not try to optimize it and third best option is try to adapt it and fourth option is try to transfer it. that is yeah so that's a good one try okay. to transfer that risk yeah. okay let's explain more how to transfer some examples i'll give you one example an industry which is into a consulting which consults an organization to set up has to help them in understanding what are the legal aspects now if i can if i give them what are the legal requirements an organization need to undergo take all the legal registrations i am i'm speaking in a, in a different language what are all the legal registrations and a, a company has to first have it to establish now if i consult wrong company will sue me so what i will do is sir this is not my core area i can help you only with how to establish your company operationally how to establish your how to select resources for your company whereas this legal part i have a counterpart who is expert in it he will do it for the collaboration for this transfer <laughs> for the transfer <laughs> any company which is manufacturing or any product owner for that matter they are manufacturing an innovative product and releasing into the market there is a lot of risk involved in the manufacturing process there is lot of cost involved economies of scale involved people management involved labor force involved the political situations where the manufacturing is set up is involved so to run <coughs> in order to avoid still have a product ownership what they do they go for a con contract manufacturing apple is a brand but who is manufacturing for apple foxconn is manufacturing for apple. so there is a risk for apple there is an opportunity for foxconn it's a good one already one sweet has gone we have three four more sweets remaining for those who ask questions so some more questions for the students sweets are for faculty members also you can also ask questions yes uh, sir mentioned that uh, about pdcl cycle in uh, make sops about it 
or if some department are stuck in the check phase, how we can encourage those teams and those people to come into the act? It's a good question. You check only after you act. That's the right way of doing it. If somebody is sorry, sorry. Did you see? Can you please re repeat your? If you are stuck in check and you don't know how to how to act, how you can help your organization to act or others to act? My my previous answer. Good, good. Thank you. Find a partner, collaborate. Who can help you in that? Not you. You you cannot do everything yourself in life. It's very simple. As a business, as a human being, you can't do everything for yourself. Even to check also, you may not be competent to check properly, or you may be biased. That's why auditors come there. You may be biased. That's where you hire a third party auditor to come and check. You hire a third party consultant to come and give you solutions for what is what has gone wrong. I think uh, Nikhil can give some good answers, additional answers for this. Nikhil, from your experience as a product manager. In PDC, I think PDC is something important to you. You may have different terms in your product management role. How do you go after check to act? Yeah, so when we know that you know there is some issues that is happening right now, then what we actually try to do is like we usually have a lot of collaborative meetings to understand, and it is from different uh, you know people involved. This product process involves multiple people. It could be like multiple stakeholders. There could be users, there could be, you know, people coming from the development background, there would be product managers, there would be project managers. So a different set of people would be coming. And we understand there is a there is an issue and we're kind of getting stuck over there. So we have this discussion, this platform where we kind of collaborate and understand from different perspectives and understand, you know, probably come up with a new idea which is kind of feasible for all of them. So it is just that we cannot generate one solution which is feasible for all of us because all of all of the group because we don't know the entire group uh, or the product might be like we're just looking at from one angle and not from the other angle so there might be a different solution say that you know the users are there and they are proposing that you know what we have a different solution for this one we probably can use this way or the, you know the technology team is telling that we have a different technology to handle this thing so those kind of situations would help you eliminate uh, you know any situation where you're getting stuck that's how we do it in product management scenarios. So collaboration for that also. Yes. yes. Okay. Now we have some more sweets remaining here. Have, have, have <laughs> anybody just to elaborate answer to your question? Have anybody heard of a model called Kappa? Corrective action and preventive action. Yeah. So people say when you find something in not right in your organization, but different different people name it as a non-compliance or non-conformity or non-adherence and all. So then you are analyze you either apply a fishbone technique or a root cause analysis again a risk of risk risk assessment uh, then risk treatment techniques then you come up with a corrective action plan then you have to collaborate with so many people within your organization outside your organization to find a solution to correct so last question for this session because now we are going to the time yes the already mentioned that nowadays the competitor also doing collaborations. Suppose there is any conflict arising between the competition competitors during that collaborations. How they are overcome this conflict and what are the method used by them to overcome this? So the question let me reframe. When competition is there for collaboration, how to make it successful? Because there may be some conflicts in the competition. Right. Uh, very good question. To me or uh, to somebody else? Okay, so we believe in collabor collaborate and compete. I repeat my statement again. Be clear with the intent. Be thorough with the basics. Value each other's principles. What are the lines we have to drop with each other? Because competitors do complement each other. It's not possible for any business organization to be unique, my USP is different, your USP is different. But I am also doing business in your USP, you are also doing business in my USP. Now, when I handle a client, when we handle a client together, what are the lines we have to draw for each other? We get into MOU, we get into NDS. Partnership do happen with a lot of agreements. And are we right on the track? What is the communication? Who is who is pop from your side? Who is pop from my side? And how do I assess 
your value to me how do you as my value to you and what can be possible conflicts like after a conflict comes it will be quite damaging in nature mm-hmm. so how to be anticipate conflicts what could be possible conflicts and what is the framework we both together write that can come to the risk analysis and r- agree upon <laughs> conflict is a risk so what are the pros and cons and what, what do we agree upon and the most challenging thing is both of us should be ethical to what we have agreed upon thank you thank you santosh i'll hand it over to mc now ladies and gentlemen we have reached the culmination round of our table conference we have shared ideas gained insights and laid the foundation for future endeavors let us carry forward the spirit of innovation cooperation and excellence as we conclude remember that the conversations we have had today are just the beginning let us continue to collaborate in a way and make a positive impact in a respective future beyond before we end the event i would like to request dr anand to kindly felicitate mr santosh who graced this event with his certificate presence dr nila may all faculty members please come for a picture together for the station thank you nikhil thank, thank you very much, much.